Uh, look with me at 1 Peter 5.5. 5. Now, in um, our closing time together, we're going to spend time with Peter, but I just want to show you his, his marvelous statement. 1 Peter 5.5, 5, he's talking about the church, he's talking about elders, talking about leaders. Uh, it's interesting, he says, Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another, and be, and this is beautiful in verse 5, 1 Peter 5.5, 5, and be clothed with humility. Clothed. By the way, submit in verse 5 and clothed are both imperatives. Imperatives in the Greek are commands. You know, sometimes we think in the New Testament there are no commands. There are tons of commands. Jesus said, he that has my commands and keeps them, he it is that loves me. That's John 14, 21. If Jesus didn't give us any commands, how can we show we love him if we don't keep his commands? Commands are imperatives. An imperative is when God says, I want you to do this. Now you've got to respond, yes or no. Now, grace means he's never going to punish me eternally for disobeying him. But grace also means that if I don't deny ungodliness and don't obey him, that I will grieve and quench the Holy Spirit, and I will not have the joy and power and peace and wonders of my salvation if I don't obey him. And what does he say? Submit. Be clothed with humility. That's an interesting word. It's the Greek word, engonkambaino, which is a very interesting word. You know what it means? It means to tie an apron around you. And it's what Jesus did at the Last Supper. When all the disciples had hard hearts and stinky feet, and they all were laying there smelling from the road with dirty feet, none of them would wash each other's feet because it was the lowliest job, and none of them were going to be lowly. They hear the sound of water into a basin, and they see Jesus taking off his outer garment, and in his undergarment, he strapped around himself the towel and tied it. That's the Greek word in verse 5. Tying the towel that a slave wore. And the slave would kneel, wash the feet, and use the towel tied around their waist to dry off the people that they were serving's feet. And that's the attitude. Look what Peter says. All of us, yea, all of us be clothed with humility, verse 5. Why? Because God is constantly resisting the proud, but God is constantly giving grace to the humble. Verse 6. Therefore, now humble is an imperative. Humble yourselves. An imperative means that we can make a choice. It's a choice to humble ourselves. It's a chosen attitude, a chosen action. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. Why? That he may exalt you in due time. And that's why we're going to end with this, because look at that, verse 7. This is the divine dumpster verse. Casting all your cares on him. God says, I'm, I'm the dumpster for you to just put all of your cares, dump them on me. You know what most of us do? We put some of our cares on him, but the rest we think we can handle. And, and it's constantly wearing us down with anxiety. God says, I want all your cares on me. You won't do that unless you're humble, and you won't be humble unless you submit. So submission, humility, and trust are a sacred trio that's connected to humility. And that humility always prompts spiritual blessing. And God constantly, by the way, the tenses in both James 4 and 1 Peter 5 are the active, ongoing tense. God is constantly resisting the proud. God is constantly pouring out his blessing on the humble. Well, real quickly before we go, how do you identify pride? How do you know, how do you know if there's pride in our lives? Well, number one, and this is a list. By the way, someone asked me, uh, Bonnie, if we could put up the list of the seven uh, signs of bitterness... Sorry, I don't have it with me. Uh, it might be online, but you all probably know what they are. But I will say that this whole series and all the um, slides are, are at the bookstore. This, the bigger one, is a DVD with videos, uh, all of the teaching. In fact, what I go and speak at the missions conferences to these missionaries all over the world is in this. And this is the MP3. This is all the audio. Uh, both of them have the text. Uh, every footnote and everything I say. But, uh, and the bookstore, by the way, is selling them. At the lowest price I've ever seen. I don't know how you're doing it, Paul. You're, you're uh, amazing. Of course, I knew that before I told you that. But what is pride? How can I identify pride in my life? Number one, I get resentful when I'm corrected. You know how you know you're proud? If someone corrects you, you seethe with resent. Resentfulness comes from pride. Secondly, 
When, when I am disappointed, when I thought I was going to win the prize, or I thought I was the best, or I was going to get first chair, if I get hurt, the only part of me that gets hurt is my pride. The only part of me that gets resentful when I'm overlooked is my pride. See, that's how we identify it. Thirdly, when I'm impatient when someone hinders me. I mean, if someone is dawdling and I'm, you know, or driving right up on their, you know, three feet or one foot from their bumper, I just wish some of those people would step on the brake and just wham them, you know, and show them a lesson. But then, you know, the rear-ended person, uh, then they win. And we shouldn't just be impatient. We shouldn't uh, do that. That's our pride. And greedy when choosing. Remember Lot? Abraham said, Look at everything. What do you want? And it says, Lot lifted up his eyes and picked the well-watered green plains of Sodom. What a bad choice. Lot lost his wife. He lost his kids. He defiled his own two daughters in a drunken orgy. And he made it to heaven by the skin of his teeth. He was righteous with a vexed soul because Lot was proud. And when he got to make a choice, he was like a little child that looked at Cupcakes. They always pick the biggest one. Or they stick their finger in it so no one else can have it. And that is pride. That I want to be greedy and have the best. And pride is when I'm critical when I'm speaking of my rival. Isn't that something? If someone is rivalrous to us, we can always pick out their faults. I mean, we're the best. And we're jealous when we see other people advance. Have you ever noticed that when there's a picture, who do you look for in the picture? Your rival? No, yourself. Everyone always is looking for themselves in the picture. When there's a list of winners, whose name are you looking for? Mine. See, that's just how we're, just by nature, we're jealous when others advance. We're untruthful when we're confronted. That's what's so hard about really growing in fellowship with Christ. Our pride makes us so protective. We don't want anybody to know our weaknesses. The Bible says in James 5, confess your faults one to another and pray for one another. Well, what do we do? We never confess our faults one to another because we don't, our pride makes us untruthful when confronted and finally distant when we're slighted. Pride makes me unreliable because you can't tell me what to do and when. Pride makes me unloving because I won't sacrifice for you. Pride makes me unteachable because I, you can't correct me. And pride makes me competitive because I will always try and outdo you. And that's what pride does, and God hates it. Humility is a choice. That's what James 4 says in 1 Peter 5. Humility takes the attraction away from sports, the captivation away from finances. How many people watch The Rich and the Famous? I don't know what iteration it's in now, but it's just like we just love looking at those people that have the life we don't have. Pride makes us that way, but humility takes the captivation away from finances, the fascination away from media. All of a sudden, God becomes more beautiful as God's grace makes the world offensive to me. That's what Galatians says, God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross by which the world is crucified to me and I to the world. And humility makes God more important than my entertainment and my pursuits. So Galatians 6.14 is where we end tonight. But God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. We're to practice biblical humility so that God gets all the glory.